introduce our, our chair of our amazing organization, the Equality Caucus, uh, Nicole Arusha Mackey. everyone for coming tonight. I'm so glad that you made it. Um, thank you for helping make our holiday gay. Um, is everyone feeling fabulously gay tonight? Yes. Okay. So um, just a few things that I want to say tonight. Um, first, you know, for those of you that don't know, I'm Nicole DeRusha Mackey. I am the founder and chairperson of the Equality Caucus of Genesee County. In a nutshell, we're advocating equality for all. is we found there weren't a lot of organizations working politically to advance LGBT rights on a local level. And they do say that all politics is local. Um, that's why we're working hard to encourage the LGBT community to begin the evidence-based practice of participating at the local level. She said it! And one of the things that that helps do is it helps promote diversity in local politics. And we know every person, regardless of race, gender, age, uh, sexual orientation, has an entitlement to equal protection under the law. That work that we're trying to do at the local level is for those things. The other thing that we're working to do is to create safe spaces for the LGBTQ community. So our community, the LGBTQ community, is vulnerable. You know, a lot of people, and I think this comes from an idea that we're icky, that people might catch the gay. But there's a lot of science-based research showing <laughs> Sexuality and gender identity are at our very core, beginning as a fetus. Fetus. So by us going through and creating safe spaces and vetting businesses like this, like 501, and having them say that they have a, they're taking a pledge to creating a safe environment, it's kind of our way as the gay community to vote with our money and say we are only going to support those businesses that support us. As you guys know, this is our second year at this location. And 501 last year hosted our inaugural, excuse me, our inaugural holiday mixer, a kickoff to the Safe Space Business Partner Program. Joe, who I reached out to, was really excited when we, we reached out to him and asked him to take the pledge. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. He was really excited to take the pledge, but he immediately put the sticker on the door. Um, but I because they were one of our first partners that they deserve a little bit more recognition. And we went ahead and we got them this plaque, a Your Safe Here plaque, Yay. that shows that they're our original safe space partners. So, thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. So, now we're going to go on to our feature entertainer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that shows that I've been in some adult establishments. Sorry about that. politics was working on the campaign of Congressman Dan Kilby. And I remember one of the first things that we were doing, we were um, trying to coordinate to have um, the congressman at Flint Pride. And I remember the first thing I thought of was one of the first pictures I remember of seeing him widely um, circulated was the no hate picture. I love that picture. If you guys haven't seen it, please look it up. It's a great picture of Dan. Um, but you know, it was so nice, it was one of those moments of just feeling validated as a human. To be able to work for someone that knows that they believe in who you are and they support who you are, regardless of what other people say. Um, thank you. And after having working, after that campaign was done, um, I had discussed with uh, my boss on that campaign about organizing the LGBT community. And it's because of that conversation and because of that first job that I decided to do this, that we decided to proceed with the Equality Caucus. So in a sense, you know, Dan kind of is, I don't know, my godfather in this whole thing. <laughs> um, but when I, when I was thinking about what I 
would say about Dan tonight, um, I was looking up a couple things, and back in February, when 45, because you guys, I can't even say that guy's name, it's, it makes me sick. So, but 45 had um, rescinded some protections for, for transgender students. And, you know, it was, you guys know how, just how awful this last year was, but when it was really coming on thick those first couple months, it just, it was like, oh my God, is this ever going to end? And I came across a statement that Dan had released, and I just want to read to you what he said, the last little bit of that, that just, you know, it solidified who Dan is as a person. To any transgender Americans questioning their value after the president's disgraceful actions, know that you are loved, valued, and important. I will continue to stand with you and the LGBT community and fight these attacks, seeking to deny every American equal rights under the law. at the local level. It's what um, Representative Tim Steller is working on at the state level, and I'm so glad that Congressman Kildee is working on it at the federal level. And because of this, I want to present him with a certificate of membership that makes him an honorary member of the Equality Caucus. I can't, I, I don't even know if I can put into words uh, how much that means to me. Um, Nicole, thank you for organizing both the caucus and of course tonight, but especially, well, two things. Uh, thank you for standing up for equality, uh, and thank you for getting me elected to Congress. <laughs> take a long time, but it is important, I think, that we sort of stop for a moment here as we go into the holidays and sort of take stock of where we stand in the, in the struggle for equality. Uh, the last decade, if we think about it over that period of time, we have to take a great deal of pride in the progress that has been made. Oh, thank you. I work for Felicia, so she's great to work for, by the way. My staff, Bill, Felicia, my, I have a great team. But, but we, we, we really do have to acknowledge that we've come some distance toward equality. It's a long march, and we are clearly not there, not entirely there. But I still remember just a few years ago, standing on the steps of the United States Supreme Court where chiseled in stone literally are words that until that moment I felt like were a deception. Equal justice under law. But until this moment occurred, and I was standing with my staff on the steps of the Supreme Court when the court for the first time acknowledged the basic humanity of our LGBTQ brothers and sisters in the decision on marriage. What a huge moment that was. What an incredible victory that was. How long it took. And of course, that was a moment where the truth of justice was finally ratified in the Supreme Court. It was not a case of the court creating justice, but the court finally acknowledging that justice means equality. And there's nothing short of that that we can ever accept. But we cannot rely on the long process of judicial challenge and the uncertainties, especially given the, co the composition of the court, that the judicial process provides us in the march toward equality. The only way we ensure equality is to make sure that we have advocates, but more importantly, far more importantly, LGBTQ members in the halls of government, making the decisions of government. And that's another, that's another area where we have seen really great progress just in the last 
decade, just in the last decade, where before there had never been an LGBTQ member of the state legislature. Now we have them. In the Congress of the United States, we're beginning to see real representation. Of course, it's my view that it's long past time that we have a transgender representative in the halls of Congress, sitting in Congress. That will happen. It will come. We will be truly taking another step toward true equality when that happens. But, with all that progress, just like the civil rights movements that have preceded LGBTQ equality and the march toward equality, there are moments where we see setbacks, where we see challenges come up. And there's no greater challenge that we face right now than the decisions being made I can't say as they hate it most of the time, by the guy in the White House, and the fact that many in Congress go along with his bigoted policy is really a dangerous moment. And there are other questions that are still being settled. I spoke at the Supreme Court, I filed an amicus brief in the Masterpiece Cake Shop case, and I spoke at the court just a couple of weeks ago on the day that the oral arguments were being made. And it struck me how, how painful it was to be basically standing in the same space on the same step that I had been just a few years ago celebrating a step, a march, in the march toward equality. And to know that there's a chance that the court could rule that someone in business can go back to that moment where they can discriminate against an individual on the basis of who they are. I mean, if that case goes the wrong way, what message does it send? It's not a, this is a, this is of course the case of the couple in Colorado that went to a cake shop to order a wedding cake and they were told no gays. It seems like to some that it's kind of a small question. And it's about cake. But it's not about cake, for goodness sake. I mean, the very same question could apply to an architect being asked to build a house for a gay couple. Or a surgeon. Or anybody engaged in commerce who chooses to enter into the public square. Can we actually go back to a moment that is tantamount to saying that the lunch counter can be for whites only and the cake shop can be for heterosexuals only? This is a much bigger question. And so it's really important that we see each of these battles for what they are. Not small questions, really big questions. And I'll I'll finish with a point that I already made, but I want to make it clear. The only way we take control of our own destiny in the march toward equality, the only way we do it, is through the process of electing people to public office. And it's not, I mean, I, I, I would say this. co-chairs of the Equality Caucus in Congress, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be now an honorary member of this caucus, and I take it as a, a very important part of the job that I swore an oath to, to, to fight, to protect, and defend equality for everyone. But you know what? It's not good enough just to have advocates. We have to make sure that we have LGBTQ members, that community represented, sitting in the state legislature, right Tim? <laughs> sitting in the state legislature, sitting on county board of commissioners, sitting on school board, running for Congress. And so as, as this caucus develops, as Nicole and others and all of you are working on this, keep in mind that among your membership, could be an individual who's got a lot to offer, far beyond just advocating for equality, but comes 
to, the, to, to this experience with great knowledge and experience that can be used in the public square. It is really important that the march toward equality is a march toward inclusion. It's not just about decisions that government makes about the LGBTQ community. We're all one community, but we all have to be at the table. That's the only way we get to equality, and that's why I'm so glad. So much. Thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you.